Hey guys, welcome back to some more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We're back with a trailer reaction since I missed the live reaction. I was out this weekend for uh, Easter festivities, but now I'm home and we're going to take a look at this banner. So I have seen the units already. Uh, sidebar, I've had a really weird last uh, 24 hours where like... I got home from our Easter party, and then I slept for like 8 hours, and then I got up around 2am and I saw the banner, and then I went back to bed for like 7 more hours, uh, and now I'm tired again, so I don't know what the deal is. But that's where I'm at, I just wanted to make sure I took a look at these units with you all before I uh, let it slip for too long. So this is obviously an FE4 banner, uh, I still have not beaten Genealogy, I was at like chapter 4 when I quit playing. Uh, I'll have to pick that up pretty soon here. And yeah, we have Tyne, or Tine. I don't think she says her name. It always. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't say it. But yeah, we have her. She's Tail 2's daughter. I was looking forward to her being added just because I like Tail 2. We got Thunderer Tome. Exhaler special trigger at start of turns 1 through 3, or if unit HP is less than 100. Uh, grand special cooldown count minus one during turns one through three, or if units HP is less than 100 at start of combat, grants attack speed plus six during combat, and also special triggers uh, deals plus seven damage and neutralizes uh, non special skills that grant damage reduction. So, pretty good. Uh, it's kind of interesting how, like, she basically gets like times pulse no matter what uh turns one through three and then after turn three as long as you have less than 100 health then you can uh you can still get it and it's going to be really easy to activate that thanks to fury four so yeah you have like minus one special trigger then you have the times pulse effect she's down to minus one uh and then you could even just slap on another times pulse and now she just has a pre-charged Draconic Aura, so Tyne's whole thing is just going to be firing off a bunch of specials all the time. Also, she's a colorless tome, which is kind of random. Uh, we're starting to get those much more frequently. I think we've gotten one per banner, almost, for a while. We got Nime, we got Sorin, and now we have Tine. I will say, her art is like... I don't know, I guess... <laughs> I, I don't mean to criticize the artists, but we have seen a lot from Omega Taro at this point, and their faces uh, are similar to each other, at least relative to like all the other varied artists in the game. Uh, so yeah. Still cool to have Teen A, Teen Tine, finally. It's been like four years or whatever, so pretty cool. Oh, she has, she has Blue Feud as well, which is new, and we already... We know what that does, but it's interesting because of, of uh, Brave Hector. I don't think this disables any kind of save skills, but yeah. But if you are fighting Brave Hector, then she will do a little better against him. If you try to support him with, like, Flane. How much does her Draconic War to? 65. She'll probably have a bunch of attack, right? A bunch of attack and speed. We also have Arthur, Furious Mage. Why is he so mad? I haven't gotten that far in, uh, in genealogy yet. I don't know yet. Uh, oh, well, it's probably because he's stuck with an inheritable tome. He has Gruan Vulture. I think we already have Rower Vulture and um, whatever the colorless one is. So we're getting the Vulture tomes pretty quickly, which is nice. Compared to like the Serpent Tomes, where I think we got one, and then the rest just took forever. Uh, we already know what Grand Vulture does. It's kind of weird that Grand Vulture is like attack and res, but then his menace skill is not attack res menace, it's just speed res menace. It's kind of weird. But yeah, speed res menace is new, so I guess that's nice. If you want like a very specialized menace skill. Uh, otherwise, there's not much to say about him since he doesn't have a perk. Which is good, because it, it doesn't take as long to uh, to cover him. 
He's an infantry green tome. And I think he's also uh, Tail 2's uh, son. Then there's this guy. <laughs> How many kids is Ira having? <laughs> Are all these Astra users from like the same bloodline? I'm so confused. I think Marita is from a different bloodline, right? Because she's Galsus's daughter, I think. What's up with all these Astra users running around Judral? Speaking of Astra, he does not get Imperial Astra or Regnal Astra uh, or anything. Vital Astra, nope, he just gets Astra. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, he, he also has Attack Defense Ideal 3, which I actually like. I, I kind of want the Tier 3 Ideal skills to be in the common pool, and that's what we'll get from uh, Skahath. He does say his name, but even even with him saying his name, I'm, I'm still not sure how to say it. My name is Skahawk. Skahawk. Okay, well, there you go. You know, in his art, it looks like he has this giant, like, special-looking sword. Very, like, specifically designed sheath for it. But then he just has a spirited sword, which is new, I suppose. But we've, we've gotten spirited lance before. And I think, I think Spirited Axe would just be a huge fan plus. So if bonus is active on unit, grants attack defense plus four and special cooldown charge plus one per foe's attack during combat. During combat, which is fine. It's, it's just that when it comes to these, uh, these these Astra users in quotes, uh, you would expect them to have slightly better perks. But he doesn't even get a perf. Uh, I have heard that, that this is our first red, like, sword and infantry demo since Sylvia, so that's kind of neat. And then our ascended hero is Ishtar. So basically continuing the trend of our ascended heroes being characters that are relatively popular, that are already in the game. Uh, when it comes to Ishtar specifically, uh, I like her character art, but I have seen people point out that it's, like, not that different from her normal outfit and like i guess that's true but also i almost kind of like what they're going for here where it's just like this reminds me of what a resplendent would be like for ishtar if they didn't have to like change her outfit to be like asker or whatever else uh, i guess it was jotunheim in her case but yeah i kind of like the idea of just like giving like upgrading a unit's art without necessarily giving them a new design people are speculating that this is like like an alternate universe Ishtar, since I think she dies in Thracia, but I don't even know about that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's dead by the end of Genealogy or Ishtar. I don't know if that counts as a spoiler, or did I say Ishtar? By the end of Genealogy or Thracia? I don't think that counts as a spoiler, because uh, people seem to be aware that she's not like a player unit. Also, I'm not even sure if it's true, so uh, there you go. But hey, it's nice to see her. <laughs> it's like an alternate universe where she is like not with uh, Julius and all them. Thunders Mjolnir. Accelerate special trigger at the start of combat if units HP, blah blah blah, grants attack speed plus six, and neutralizes effects that grant special cooldown charge plus X, or inflict special cooldown count minus X on unit. And also, if unit initiates combat and unit speed is greater than foe's speed plus 10, unit attacks twice. I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw that we were getting Ascended Ishtar, I kind of expected her to get like, no follow-up and wind sweep in her weapon, since that's kind of what people do with the uh, Resplendent Ishtar. And since they're kind of deviating from that, my initial impression was like, oh, this weapon might be kind of bad. <laughs> because, um... Since it doesn't have no follow-up on it, if you want that effect, then you will have to use her B-slot for that. But, uh, she does get this Brave effect in her weapon, and honestly, just having the Brave effect might be better than relying on her double, because then you don't have to, like, worry about her ever getting counterattacked. So, I don't know. I think she could still be really good. Uh, obviously she'll have really good stats because she's, like, an Ascended Hero. Uh, life and death 4, so yeah, definitely specialized to just attack, attack twice, kill something, don't ever get counterattacked, that kind of thing. Also, I think you could just run Windsweep on her, on her, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I think you could just run a wind sweep on her and she would still get her ra rave effect. So if you're worried about getting counterattacked, you can just do that. Yeah, I think she'll be pretty good. I guess her base kit is kind of boring just because it doesn't have like a new skill, but I mean, she still has good skills, so whatever. I will save them. And that's that. I believe our GHB is Hilda. Not not that Hilda, the other Hilda. Oh, this map looks kind of interesting, actually. Uh, yeah, our GHB is Hilda. Hilda is like... Is it Tail 2's aunt, or is it Tail 2's sister? I'm actually not sure. Uh, Tail 2's whole bloodline is kind of messed up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what's going on there, I'll be honest. Uh, I think Ishtar... Ishtar is Hilda's daughter. I think Ishtar is Tail 2's niece, which means that Tail 2 and Hilda are sisters. I'm pretty sure. One thing I've seen people talk about with this banner is um, it really accentuates the, uh, you could call it the, the sexism or the gender disparity in Fae, where just inexplicably, men always get worse skills. And it's to a point where it's like, you know, like obviously the men are going to sell worse than the women if you keep giving them shitty skills. It's, I think it's valid. It, I think it's valid to point it out, but also I think they've been doing this for a while. This banner just really uh, accentuates this, since you have like a Skahawk, who on paper should be pretty similar in power level to Larce, but then he just gets stuck with an Inheritable Sword and Odd Defense Wave 3, and no Special Astra. Yeah. <laughs> It's too bad, but uh, they really seem to think that they can only sell uh, female characters. That's why almost all the harmonized units are women. It's a little irritating, but that's the world we live in. At least when we get Talia's banners, they usually make it more even, I feel like. That's just an observation, though. I guess that's it for this reaction video. I still managed to talk for like 10 minutes even though I don't have chat to bounce off of. Uh, thank you for watching this reaction. I appreciate you. Uh, we'll be back sometime soon. I think our next New Heroes trailer or banner is the Fallen Heroes, so that will be interesting, potentially. Stay tuned for that. Uh, let me know what you think of this banner. Are you going to pull on this banner? I don't think I will, personally. Even though I like Tyne, I can always just get her later. It's not super urgent. Yeah, especially since we have the Fallen Heroes banner coming out soon. Let me know what you think. That's going to be it for me. So I'll talk to you guys next time.